Hold on, just. Hey, you good? Okay. Okay. So let's let's continue on to the the first step. So for this part of the talk, we're going to be discussing uh, geometry um, and setting up Laplace's equation in Moose. And so first, uh, we what's our problem? So we've got the standard Laplace's equation. Um, and to do that, we in Moose, we don't need to solve any code. Um, so you might remember the weak form discussion I was talking about earlier, um, taking your strong form of your equation, the form that's written down on paper, and converting it into something that's uh, uh, more amenable to finite elements. Um, so that uh, Laplace's equation will have a weak form um, shown at the top. Um, so this is an inner product notation. So you have your, your integral of um, the gradient of V times the gradient of your basis function um, minus your boundary condition term there equals zero. So for right now, we're just going to ignore the boundary condition term. Um, and we'll just set that term equal to zero. Um, so and the structure of this is similar to what we need for Poisson's equation. So the, uh, and then in, in, in Moose, this is called a diffusion object um, as, as, part of its, as part of its history in, in neutronics and those sort of cal particle um, calcula uh, fluid calculations. Um, so this is the, uh, it already exists in Moose. So we don't need to add any new code to do this. Um, all we need to do is specify the geometry and set up a 1D Cartesian problem define the boundary conditions that we want to pose on those boundaries, and then we can do all of that inside the input file for this step without making anything new. So this is a chunk of a Moose input file. And so if you want to look at this on your computer, um, it's in the tutorial application under um, step one. So first of all, we're generating a mesh. So this top block right here, any Moose, any chunk of code in the Moose input file, um, it has a type. So in this case, we're creating our mesh. So we have our mesh block with type of generated mesh. So we can generate lines, rectangles, and boxes with this. Uh, we wanted to do a 1D example. So we're saying the dimension for that mesh is going to be 1. Nx is the number of elements. So we say we'll give it 100 elements. And the, um, we have a, a maximum value in the x direction of 2.54. Um, so, so x min, y min, z min, those are all 0. Um, but you know y min and z min don't matter because they, they're overridden by um, the, the dimension equals one. Um, so if we if we want to do a square um, or a, or a line in this case, a one D domain with a maximum of two point five four, that's all we need to do. We don't need to say x min equals zero; it's already there. So moving on to the next block, we want to set up our variables. So um, that's because by default, um, the Moose applies a linear Lagrange basis function. So a basis function, and we'll go into this more in a minute, um, but a basis function that is one at the node that you're interested in and zero at all the neighboring nodes and linear in between. So leaving, naming, your, naming your variable and leaving it blank here, that's the default. And you'll have an order and a family associated with it if you want to change it from there. And you label that just like you would this. So say you want a second. So now we have our kernels block. So kernels is your, are, they're your pieces of physics and your simulation. Um, so in this case, um, because we have a very simple equation, um, we can use built-in uh, code. So we can use the diffusion uh, uh, kernel that, is art, that already exists in Moose. Um, and we, from this, sure. What about the physical unit? So 2.54 centimeters. Right. So the units, so these, these, the calculations, before you set it in units, the, the calculations are, are done unitless. So you, so you as the developer, um, need to define what units you're using. Um, so if you're, if you're sticking with, with meters and, uh, and uh, um, if you're working in a system where you have, you have to do a lot of unit conversion, um, sometimes it may be easier to, um, and, and this is done in Zapdos, um, where you you have your your base unit system, um, but then you're you're inputting things with their with their native units and scaling them as you need to in order to be consistent. Um, so you can do that on a, on a code level. Um, you can do that on an input file level um, by changing like you can set up a global parameter for your units and set them. So it's really it's really kind of ad hoc, however you want or need to do it for your problem. 
OK. So now we've defined our mesh. We've defined the variables that we're solving for. And we've defined our physics, or our physics term, or our actual term in our equation. But we still need to define our boundary conditions. Um, so in this case, uh, where we can, it simply means the variable that's being operated on. Um, so your u equals some value. Um, so a variable, again, is our potential. And the left boundary, um, we're saying we're giving it a value of 100, or 100 volts. Um, so on the right, we have another Dirichlet BC um, with a variable operating on potential on the right boundary. So for moose general to denote your side, which is, I think, default is 0 and 1 for a 1D mesh, um, or, and then it changes based on the, the, whether you're doing 2D or 3D, or they're also um, readable and just saying left or right. Um, moose, the framework will understand what you're talking about. Um, if you're creating your own mesh using an external software and bring it in, you need to know either the number associated with the side set in the mesh, or you... Does anybody have any questions about any of that before I move on? This is, this is the, the, the solver and executioner settings and that sort of thing, but does anybody have any questions before I get to this about how we've set up the equation so far? Okay. So this, this block here, um, these are default settings. This is setting up the type of problem they're using. So this is the normal type of finite element problem in Moose, FE problem. Um, most of the time, you will never, this, this block here is mostly just for um, explanation purposes. Um, uh, for, for this, you don't, even, you don't even need to have this block because everything in there is default. Um, so for executioner, we don't have any time derivatives or anything like that. It's a steady state problem, so we're setting type equals steady. Um, we're using a, a, a solve type of preconditioned Jacobian free Newton Krylov, which we can go into that um, in a few slides. Um, then, because PETC is the back end of Moose, or one, one of the pieces of the back end of Moose, um, we can have access to, to command line options, is Boomer AMG. Um, so Boomer AMG is for like elliptic style problems, and that's what we have here. So um, just set, the, set those. Um, to be that setting, but you can change those. These are the command line options that you would put into PETC if you were running something with PETC. Um, and so any, any questions about that, I would, I would direct you to the, the PETC user's guide. Um, but you separate it up by um, iName, which is the, the actual, um, um, what you're changing. Don't have, you have an option that doesn't require an answer. That's, you want to tell PETC to do something specific and it's just a flag. Um, you also have access to that. And then, of course, we want to have our outputs block. We want to see the data that, we, that, we're, that we're making. Um, so we're telling it to output to an Exodus um, file format output file. Um, you can output to, to various different output formats. Common, common um, what I generally tend to use is either Exodus or CSV, depending on the, the data. Okay. So uh, um, before, we get, before we move on any further, I wanted to ask all of you, um, and everything seems to be working okay. Okay, we've had some, we've had some random random. Okay, well the the. the yeah, the 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 URL I showed earlier for yeah. GitHub, yeah. Okay, well if if you um, after you have Moose installed and working, all you have to do is you make. Um, I was going to let people um, get to that before we moved on much further. So, all right. I guess Corey's coming to come and help you out. Thanks, Corey. Um, so, after we've made this input file, and presumably at this point we've run it, and it looks good, um, we want to make a test because we want to make sure. Now, in this case, it's not so important. This is this is this test actually comes with every problem, but uses a smaller mesh to increase the speed. For a small problem like this, that's negligible. But in general, you will you will design a test surrounding a piece of physics that you've created, um, and then you'll make a test for it. And the the structure of a Moose application is such that it's really easy to make a test. Um, you'll see those Moose examples of that in the Moose slash test slash tests directory, where they're organized by um, the, the type of uh, test they are, like whether it's testing a kernel, an auxiliary kernel, that sort of thing. In an application, you can, um, you can load everything in that, in that directory. You don't have to be as, as strict um, as, as Moose is um, about um, the directory labeling there. 
Um, but in, you'll, you'll notice in the, to, in the directory of the tutorial um, repository um, that your test directory has several things in it. You, one, you'll have a tests file, um, and that's where this block comes from. And uh, the, it's structured in the same way as an input file in terms of you have a block, you have a, a, an, interior, an interior level that has a name, and then some information about that interior block. Um, so in this case, and for a, 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 a good output file, a file that we know to be correct, of Laplace underscore out dot e. And so this file would be located in a, in a folder called gold in that directory. Moose knows that your good results are in the gold directory. And so when, when you do a test, um, when you run your tests, it'll take this input file, it'll run it, it'll output, it'll, it'll, it'll output the, the, the data file from that run and compare it against what you made previously that you, that you know to be. Again, this is the same input file that we saw before. The only difference is I've just decreased the, the number of elements um, to 20 instead of 100. Um, again, for a small test, the timing it takes is, is, is negligible, but for larger tests, it can make a difference. And all you're doing is testing the functionality. Okay. Did you, did you have a question, Steve? Okay. Um, so again, this is the same input file before as before. Um, I just put it up here as, as reference. And if you want to see this input file, um, you can see it in the tutorial. Before I move on to, we're going to go into some finite element principles. Um, and I wanted to pull the room. Um, how many of you are familiar with the finite element method? Um, and how many are? Well, let's start with how many are familiar with the finite element method? Okay. So a portion of the room. Um, so how many are not at all familiar? Okay, so we've got some extremes. Um, so we'll go, we'll go through some of this. This is, this'll, this'll take a little bit of time, I imagine, so um, feel free to stop me if it's structured. Well, okay, so, so okay, since, since part of the room do, doesn't have a working part of the room does, um, I'll get a, get a working example of this up on the screen and run it and show everybody. So that'll be, I think that'll be beneficial. So, let me get that going. Oh, do you? Okay. Well, I'll need to make it bigger though, so everybody can see it. So, uh, to run this, I'm going to go to my projects directory, and then tutorial. So this is something they could follow along on the computer, right? Yeah. So if you set up if you set up Moose using the um, installation, the getting started instructions. It'll instruct you to, to make a projects directory um, to place Moose in. Um, feel free to place Moose. Um, I think you can probably place it wherever you want, right? Or is it is it dictated, David, by the by the location? Okay. So so. Yeah. Okay. So 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 the the, the de if, if for those of you who didn't hear, um, so if you're installing Moose and you're putting your application, we prefer it to be in the same directory. Um, Moose and your application be in the same root directory. Um, if not, then you have to specify where Moose is located um, so your directory can find it. And so we'll go to that. And so here's a, here's a standard look at what a, what a, a basic application looks like. Um, and so we want to look for that test. So I already have it loaded up in tests. We're going to go to test and then tests. And so we have all our tests here. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go to step one. And so, like I told you before, there's that structure of your, your uh, test directory. So you have a gold directory. That's where your good result is, then your, your test file. And so if we look at that, like, I, like, you, like you saw, that's what a test file generally looks like, um, just that one block. And then if I want to run this, then 
I need to go back or direct, go back to my, my, um, uh, the, the file, the, 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 the executable for your application that I've made. Um, but actually, let's take, a, let's take a step and make it. Then you just need to type make and then the number of uh, uh, J and the number of pro, uh, threads or the number of cores that you want to run. Um, it'll make it. So after it makes it, it'll have your, and so the, de the default um, when you type make and, and J8 or J however many cores you have, um, the default is going to be an OPT executable. So that's an optimized executable. Um, there are different versions of that. So if I want, then I would type method equals debug and then make J8. And that would rebuild my application in a less optimized mode so that if you needed to um, um, run it through a debugger, um, so if you're having an issue and there's like a memory problem or something like that that you, that you can't track down um, in, a, in, a, in a simple way, um, you would want to make a debug version of this executable so you can run it with your debugger. Um, okay, so is anybody have any questions about any of that before I go back to, we're going to, we're going to run the input um, and follow along with me. So if you got loose running, there's a good chance to take care of that. You feel good about everything and make sure it's running well on your computer. So we're going back to our directory, our test directory. And so I'm going to run my compiled application tutorial dash OPT. Um, so you're, you have your executable. In order to run the, uh, an input file, right, step one dot I, I believe, okay. So that would be the command I would use to run it. And so let's run it. And so if we look at output, a standard output for Moose, it'll give you some framework information, um, what commit you're on, what was, the, what was the day that that commit was made to give you an idea of Moose doesn't have standardized versions. It's, uh, it updates very, very frequently. Um, so your, the, the, the version you're using, we, we use. So whenever you have an issue um, and you're posting to the Moose users group, um, very often you'll get questions about, well, what version of Petsy do you have? What version of LibMesh do you have? Um, and those questions you can answer with this output. And you can also, um, uh, if you, can, you can save this to a file um, um, automatically as well. Um, if you, if you um, essentially pipe the, the output out, but anyway. So it'll show you some information about your run. So in this case, I, I've, I've just run a default command, and then if I've made any, made any subdomains or partitions, then it'll give that information as well. Um, it'll also give me my number of degrees of freedom, the variables that I have um, turned on or, or put in my input file, and then the finite element type and the, and the finite element order for that, um, that type. It'll also give me executioner information, so steady versus transient, or even eigenvalue if you're setting up an eigenvalue problem. Um, so then, then it'll, it'll go into um, the solve. So this is when you're, when you're putting, a, in finite elements, when you're putting a, um, your, your strong form of your equation into a weak form, um, it's also called a residual form. Um, so in the, in the case of the example equation, um, you're, 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 you only have one term, so there's nothing to really move around. But so say you have, and what Moose is trying to do is to make the left-hand side of the equation get as close to zero as possible. And so what you're, what, to minimize the residual. And so what you're seeing on your screen is every nonlinear step and then every linear step inside of every nonlinear step. Um, now Moose makes some assumptions about um, the, the, what, based on your solver settings, what you're doing um, in that if you have a direct a default way of looking at your problem. But so as we can see, it, it minimized um, to a pretty, pretty good residual. And so that seems like it's a good run. Okay, so I, I, will, I will get to that in, a, in, a, in, a, in some other slides, but um, there, there, are, there are absolute and relative tolerances for your nonlinear steps and your linear steps. And those can be set in the input file. Maybe the six? Okay, okay. Um, and then it, 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 it changes based, I'm not familiar with all of the, all of the defaults um, off the top of my head. But you can change those in your executioner block um, as you need to, and those are all available to you. Go ahead. Is there a fixed data type for the real number? Right? So, so um, your, 
Does that, that, does that, that get your question answered? Okay. Okay. All right. So say I want to I want to look at this data now that I made it. So am I, that's the that's the the solve. So it's there's a, there's a there's a solve. Okay. So in my case, I'm using Paraview as my visualization software of choice. Um, so if I want to look at this file, I'm going to have to open Paraview. And it didn't open on that screen, which is annoying. Okay. Um, so this is Paraview, or, or, or not that hard to learn. So we'll, we'll not go too far into how to use Paraview, but the uh, so you, so we're just going to open up that file we made. <coughs> Dual screens, man. Um, just a second. Well, because I've got some stuff I'm looking up on here and throwing it up there. Uh, step one dot out, or underscore out dot e, and okay. so back here. So we want to look at a, a plot of that data. So we go to render view. We go to sample data points along the line. Get rid of that. So let's find our variable here, potential. We'll select that so we can see it. And we'll plot it over a line. So this, you'll see in this, the initial condition. So even if you are running a steady state solve, Moose will give you an initial condition. You can set um, a, a, an initial condition even for a steady state solve. So if you're, if you're trying to step through a problem up to a steady state solve in a traditional sense. So you'll see that zero here because there is a default initial condition of zero. Um, but if you play that, you'll go up to the one step, which is the only step you have, and you'll see our left boundary condition is 100, is, our left condition is, is 100, our right one is zero, and we're linear in between, which is what we expect. So, so if, uh, if anybody has any trouble um, doing the same thing, say it again. This right here? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, plot over line is the name of it. Yeah. And so some of these, some of these, the commonly used options are sitting here. You could, you could, you could do a lot of, uh, okay. So let's get back to the slides. So before I move on to a discussion of finite element principles as it relates to Moose, um, does 